I've said it before, I never quite know what I'm going to find on Dorchester car boot sale. And this time I found an Olympus and it's Olympus IS100 from 1994. 1994. This is about six years before the digital revolution really went crazy. Cameras had become more and more automatic and the compact camera had become very well known. However, people wanted zoom lenses and there was a lot to be said for something that was single lens. And here we've got a completely automatic single lens camera. Um, and it's got all sorts of slightly strange things on it. It's got a film in it at the moment, so I can't open the back to show you, but the lens is part of the camera. So you could say this is an early bridge type of camera. Um, we can't take the lens off, but it's a uh, 28 to 110 mil. So that's quite a long and wide angle lens. You switch on the camera here on and off. You can see here, we've got an interesting feature here that we can press fully auto if I press fully auto, you see how it goes green in the middle here, and I can simply, um, the camera is automatic focus. I just look, shoot, and the camera does everything for me. I've got two other modes. I've got a portrait mode here. I've got a landscape with people or landscape mode. I've got a sport mode. So in this sport mode, it will try to use the fastest shutter speed it can and the smallest aperture or open up the aperture. Under portrait, it will open up the aperture, meaning uh, maybe um, quite, it could be a fast, yes, but it will rely on, uh, a, a, it tries to get a portrait look. Landscape, it probably shoots down the aperture to get a landscape look. And as I said, you can press, we've got a nighttime mode and you can press full auto um, to get full auto. We can put up the flash if we want here. And I've got a spot meter. If I want to focus or um, meter on a spot, I've got a spot there. And that is basically it with this camera. I've never used the IS100 before, so I'm not quite sure how the film is going to come out. Um, oh, the flash will come on automatically. I think we can, I've tried this button here. I think it should set the flash off, but it doesn't at the moment. The zoom is at the back. You operate the zoom here. The camera um, has um, run back the film, so that's why um, some of the functions aren't operating because the, um, it knows that the film is finished. Um, let's see whether I got any results when I actually used this camera. I had a slight issue with this whole film in that it was a rather ancient roll of HP5 and it definitely is slightly underdeveloped or underexposed. I, to, um, I think because it was so out of date by about 20 years, I think it was a fact it actually needed further development. It was a bit fogged to be honest as well. So these photos are absolutely fine. The camera performed well. It is sharp. I was surprised how steady the shots were. I sometimes worry that with these long zooms etc that the shutter speed isn't always good enough but in this case it was absolutely fine. You can notice some grain within the HP5. Having said that, a little bit of grain can add to the artisticness of the photographs and gives a slightly edge which I quite liked in some of these photographs. The later ones you're about to see that I took um, on a country walk here, I really liked this sort of effect here. I did find the negatives to be a little bit contrasty. I think this was because of the issue with the out-of-date film stock. Um, but however, I quite enjoyed using this camera. It is like using a digital bridge camera. You basically point, shoot, it works out everything else for you. You've got quite a long zoom. It's ergonomic to hold. 
it actually was a surprising camera for me to use. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it, but you can concentrate on what you are taking. Many thanks for watching. Hope to see you again in some future videos. Bye for now.